Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Netflix Transformers War for Cybertron Decius Army Drone. Now, this is a really interesting toy. It is obviously a direct read echo of the Siege Ironhide toy, but it's meant to be just kind of a mindless robotic drone that's controlled by the Quintesson Judge Decius. Decius, uh, if you haven't seen the second season, is a Quintesson that the Autobots uh, run into. And due to his conflicting personalities, he's driven uh, basically mad and ends up betraying the Autobots. And you do see, albeit very briefly, this army of drones that are all under the control of Decius that you know take aim at the Autobots, and they all just happen to look like Ironhide. And the whole reason for that is because the War for Cybertron cartoon is made on a fairly limited budget, so they recycle a lot of character models. I mean, there's only like a handful in the whole show, really. So they went with Ironhide for those. Now, is that really weird that Decius has a bunch of black Ironhides at his disposal? Absolutely. <laughs> it's completely weird. Um, but that does make this just that much more of an interesting figure because you get something that looks like Ironhide, who's really just a robot that works for the Quintessons. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the Army Drone's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll see the instructions, then we'll see the drone itself in both the vehicle and robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So our Army Drone comes in what is now your standard deluxe packaging for the Netflix toys. You can see it front and center here. And you should have... Looks like the little bazooka weapon's hiding away somewhere. It's probably behind this insert or under it. Uh, here you get artwork of the toy, and it's very obviously Ironhide's artwork from Siege. You can actually still make out the slight red tint where they didn't completely color wash them. So they did the same thing with uh, the other toys, too. They just recycled the artwork, which is pretty lame, not going to lie. Here you can see renders from the toy, which are just recolor renders of Ironhide. It has all the same poses and everything. It takes 15 steps to transform, which is cool. Uh, the renders show like a bluish windshield. and uh, I guess it's still kind of bluish, a bit darker in the final product. And he has a uh, Quintesson sigil for his little badge there. Then here on the side, you get the Netflix version of the Kingdom side art panel. All right, here we get the Decius Army Drones instructions, and you can see they're done up in this bright green, which is the color that during uh, Earthrise was used for the Quintesson line toys. Now with Kingdom around, it's also used for Maximals because they use bright green on their stuff. In fact, is it? No, actually it's all the Kingdom stuff. All Kingdom uses bright green. So that might be confusing for some people. It's a recycled color, but I like it. I'm glad they're still distinguishing between, you know, Quintessons and Decepticons and not just lumping them all in as bad guys. So that's pretty cool. We open this up. Gives us the how-to on turning his missile launcher weapon into a big old hammer. And then it just goes straight into the transformation from robot to vehicle. Gives you the weapon storage here and the finished product. So nothing too complicated. Again, unlike the original use of this Ironhide, they don't go nuts with like names for the weapons and you know stats and stuff for them. They've kind of moved away from all that. Combat system is, I mean, it's still there, but you know, in concept only. Okay, here we get the drone in vehicle mode. You can see it's very heavy on the battle damage. So very much in line with other Siege toys. In fact, probably even more so and most Siege toys, it's, it's pretty heavy there. Um, but you can see it's supposed to be mostly black with a lot of weathering effects and stuff. Got a prominent Quintesson symbol right here on the front. Got a, what looks to be like an almost purplish windshield. Kind of reminiscent of barricades, though a bit lighter on the color. Uh, kind of a dark silver plastic for the bumper section with silver accents that are a bit lighter. Uh, the feet are... The same dark silver, which, you know, make them stick out pretty significantly from the rest of the vehicle. Though, unlike with the Earth mode based toys, this doesn't bother me so much because it's supposed to be an alien vehicle. So if it, you know, if it has boosters on the back, so be it. And overall, you know, it looks fine. Pretty solid. 
The weapon can be stored, you know, here, here, really anywhere on top. As far as rolling, still has no issue with that. Rolls just fine. And it holds together very well. So, you know, overall the vehicle mode's pretty solid looking. And here's a quick comparison with the Siege Ironhide toy, which is what this toy is directly based off of, just a straight recolor. And I think overall I prefer the colors on this new toy a bit more. I mean, you know, Ironhide, his colors are pretty classic, but they look kind of weird on a war-torn vehicle, right? You're pulling that this 80s aesthetic into sci-fi and just, I, I should say like Earth-based 80s aesthetic into a sci-fi vehicle. It does look a little weird. I do prefer the black and silver overall, but either one's kind of fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's up to personal taste. I like the green highlights and the missiles. I didn't really mention this, but that looks pretty cool. Helps the missiles stand out a little bit more than silver on gray. And because of the darker windshield and darker color of the head, the head is less obvious than Ironhide, who, you know, you can see his noggin on full display there. So functionally, yeah, they're the same. Wasn't that better than the other? It just comes down to personal taste with the colors. But from what I've seen in online discussions, this new black and silver color scheme seems to be the more popular of the two. And here's a big old group shot with every variation of this mold. Again, we get the standard iron hide. We get his minor retool crosshairs. We get the slightly more heavy retool and siege ratchet. And we go full earth mode with Earthrise iron hide, ratchet here, and shattered glass ratchet from selects. So you can see there's a lot of variation here. Even amongst just the Siege versions of the toy, you have quite a bit going on, right? These two, same mold, obviously. Then you get a whole retooled head here, and then you get massive retooling here, and that's before you even get into the Earth modes, which just completely change the profile of this vehicle mode. So, yeah, overall, I, I don't feel that these are too samey compared to something like, you know, the Seekers or the... Uh, you know, side swipe mold family. I like it. I like the variation. Personally, I do wish they had done more crosshairs to, you know, separate him a bit from Ironhide, but given the relative obscurity of the character, it's better than nothing at this point. I mean, he is the only Autobot target master that's been updated, like, at all, right? We're still waiting on Sure Shot and Point Blank, so I guess at this point I'll kind of take what I can get. Okay, I'm busting out the turnstile again, and based on feedback from viewers, I decided to, instead of just using these for like the whole review, because they some people said it's kind of distracting, plus if I have to make a jump cut, it's like glaringly obvious. So I'm just gonna kind of do these real quick for each mode after I'm done talking about them, just to give you guys, you know, a nice 360 of the toy. So hopefully this strikes a good balance between, you know, using it too much, not using it enough. So here you go, this is your real nice, just. 360 isometric view of the figure gives you a real good idea of just how this vehicle mode comes together without you know my hands being in the way and you know me jolting the thing back and forth maybe faster than you can get a good look at it so there it is all right now we get to see our quintesson drone in his robot mode and this is the mode in which they're actually seen in the netflix show though to be fair most transformers are only seen in the robot mode in the netflix show because budget reasons but you can see he's very cool looking and a lot of people I know when they you know first saw this they were kind of disappointed because they were expecting something more akin to a black uh, diaclone version of Ironhide. This isn't quite that it's got a lot more silver and stuff mixed in but I don't know I, I like it for what it is I think the silver accents really help it and keep it interesting if he was just all black he'd be kind of boring to look at just be like a shadow basically. So I like it. I like the silver on the chest. Again, the nice prominent display of the Quintesson symbol. Really just contrasts against his darker colors. Interestingly, he's got blue eyes, which is not a color you'd normally associate with Quintessons, but kind of cool nonetheless. His little bazooka thing or rocket launcher looks really neat with like the black gradient on the tip. Uh, as far as his tolerances, all that, everything's still pretty much as stable as any version of this mold. This arm, the shoulder, feels slightly, slightly looser than most of my copies of the Ironhide mold, though that could just be mine. Uh, one thing that'll help kind of put people's minds at ease is that the leg panels are solid, 
They don't carry over the same issues that early runs of the Siege Iron High did, where you know they pop off. They wouldn't stay in place over here. Now they can pop off still a little more easily than some other copies I have of this mold, but not to the extent that the old Iron Hides did, where like basically just moving them meant they were going to pop off. So overall, I think he looks pretty good. You know, he's nice and solid still, no issues, despite the fact that this is the seventh use of this mold now. So that's pretty impressive. They seem to have really worked out the issues of mold degradation in uh, you know recent years. So that's something I'm very happy to see. Here's another big group shot with all the mold mates for this drone. Again, Siege Ironhide, Siege Crosshairs, Earthrise Ironhide, Seed Ratchet, Earthrise Ratchet, Shatter Glass Ratchet. The variations between all these guys really start to shine in robot mode, you know, even more so than vehicle mode. And a lot of that's due to, you know, different accessories. Now I'm kind of cheating a little bit, right? I got Crosshairs teamed up with his Target Master partner who doesn't actually come with him. They came with the uh, Netflix Megatron from the first wave. And though you can't see it, the Earthrise Ironhide is rocking his drill weapon from the accessory pack. So, you know, there are ways to make them stand out even more from each other than they already do. And, you know, kind of how I said in the vehicle mode, these don't feel too samey to me. Like, each one of these characters feels very unique, has a lot of personality, even though, you know, most of them share the majority of their tooling with one another. So, overall, I, I feel pretty satisfied with how this pans out, and again, I still think the new colors on this, you know, army drone are just a little bit better than Ironhide's. You know, Ironhide is a great character. I was never super crazy about his colors, though. I don't know, they just always seemed a little McDonald's-like. But that's just me. I'm sure a lot of people will vehemently disagree with that take, and that's fine. That's fine. I get it. And here's an extra special group shot. You get the Dezius army drone with all of his accomplices that are currently available in Generations. You get all the characters from the Quinnison Pit of Judgment, including a Judge, a Bailiff, a Sharktacon, and the Prosecutor. And then you get the individually available toys, a different Quinnison Judge, Alicon, the Titan's Return Sharktacon, or Gnaw, and then the Battlemaster Slitherfang. So it took you know, almost four decades, but we're finally getting a good assortment of Quintesson aligned characters, right? For the longest time, what did we have? We had Gnaw. <laughs> we had Gen 1 Gnaw and Titan's Return. And that's really all we had to fill that hole in our collection. And then, you know, Cyberverse popped in a little bit with their own version of Gnaw and a Judge, which was, you know, not nearly as impressive. But here in Generations, which is, you know, kind of the collector haven and official Transformers, we're finally getting a nice little army of Quintessons. And I like that not only are we just getting, you know, the characters we already know of, like Sharktacons, Alicons, all that. We're even getting some interesting new additions, like Battlemasters, like these army drones, which, you know, the concept may seem a little weird to some people that aren't, like, super deep into the G1 lore. Like, oh, why do they have these, you know, Ironhide knockoffs as drones? It actually makes a lot of sense when you look at the history of the Quintessons, especially in the context of like the G1 cartoon. You know, in that continuity, they were actually the ones that created the Transformer race and as such had like mindless drone versions of those designs, including a Diaclone colored Blitzwing drone called Overcharge. So this is actually kind of right out of their playbook. And, you know, Ironhide kind of makes sense, right? He's like the quintessential buff foot soldier guy. So if you want, you know, a mass-produced army of drones, he's a pretty good framework to copy. Now, this does leave me, you know, hoping that maybe sometime soon we get a recolor of Blitzwing as Overcharge. That'd be pretty cool. We haven't had one since the original E-Hobby recolor of the G1 toy. Which, I guess, add that to, you know, the list of officially available Quintesson toys, because that is technically one, too. Now, to be fair, the use of the Ironhide model in the Netflix show is probably just due to budget reasons, right? They, they just really overuse character models as generics. But, in this case, it ends up working out. Whether or not that was intentional, 
whether or not anyone running the show actually knows anything about overcharged drones, I, I kind of doubt it, but I'll try to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they know what they're doing, because I'm nice like that. And this completes our look at the new Netflix Dezius Army drone. Uh, overall, I really like the look of this thing. Like, yes, it's another repaint. Um, it's not a must have for everybody. And it's kind of out there. I get that. So it's really up to you if you think there's a place in your collection for this. Like if you're a completionist, then absolutely, right? It's way more interesting and useful than just like a slight Ironhide recolor that's still Ironhide. You know, at least they're making new characters, giving us new looks. So overall, I think he's worth picking up, but I can also understand where, like if you're just a G1, you know, character collector or you don't like repaints, I think you could skip it if, you know, it's not really your cup of tea. But, you know, either way, I'm fond of it. I think it's one of the more interesting things to come out of this third wave. And I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Of course, that's just how I feel about this toy. Now I want to know what you all think of this new drone. Do you see a place in your collection for it? Does this scratch a certain niche for you, whether it's you know new characters, Diaclone references, anything? Or does this not interest you at all? Is it like an easy pass for you? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. If you want to help support the channel or join in on, you know, special perks like live chats, special member Q&As, make sure to hit the join button and you can become a member for as little as $1.99 a month. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Netflix War for Cybertron Dezius Army Drone. And with all that said, I will see you next time.